Hello again, I'm Mike Mazzalongo and this is the Bible Talk video blog. Today's blog entry is entitled, Three Choices Christians Need to Make. Well, I've often said to my eldest son as we discussed serious issues that life is a series of choices. Where will you live? Who will be your friends? Who will you marry? How you will react to what happens to you or what you will do with your time and your talent and your energy. You know, when you look back at your life, you can usually see the line it took by plotting out the choices that you made along the way. Well, Christian life is like this as well. Jesus tells all of His would-be disciples that their lives will eventually bring them to three choices and what they choose will determine the direction of their spiritual lives. So three choices, all based in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 to 37. So the first choice that Jesus tells us about is peace or conflict. Let me read uh, chapter 10, verse 34 in Matthew. It says, Do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I came to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be the members of his household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So the first choice, peace or conflict. You know, being a Christian will always bring the disciple into conflict with one's surroundings, because Christianity goes against the grain of this world, its ideas, its actions, its desires. Even the ones who love and accept us most readily, our family, will be in conflict with us over Christ if we decide to follow Him and they don't. I mean, just start being more zealous for Christ than your parents or your brothers or sisters or friends or spouses and watch the tension rise. Paul the Apostle tells us that our own flesh will be in conflict against our spirit when that spirit is given to Christ. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. In other words, your own self will be in battle with you if you decide to give everything to Jesus. If you're a disciple or contemplating becoming one, realize that your choice will include a lifelong conflict with your surroundings because this world and everyone within it are opposed to Christ and if you stand with Him, you will be opposed to you uh, in one way or another. If you choose Christ, you've chosen conflict over peace. Well, in this world anyways. Secondly, the second choice is His will over your will. Let's read again in Matthew chapter 10, this time verse 38. It says, And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. You know, there are many creative sermons from this text about the imagery of carrying the cross of Christ, but basically the Lord is asking us to submit to the same thing that He did which led Him to carrying the cross, and that, was, and that is uh, uh, submitting to the will of the Father in heaven. Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done, Mark chapter 14, verse 36. And in doing this resulted in Him literally carrying a cross upon which He was executed. And so when we choose to be Christians, that choice includes our submission to the will of God. His will is that we be forgiven and raised from the dead and comforted and nourished by the Holy Spirit, and, and this is good. His will also requires that we put sin out of our lives, that we genuinely sacrifice ourselves for others, and yes, sometimes even give up our lives for His cause on a modern day cross. Whatever it means in your life, the choice is always the same. To choose Christ is to choose to do His will over your own will. And then the third choice, the next life over this life. Again, I go back to Matthew chapter 10, this time in verse 39, and it says, He who has found his life will lose it, and he who has lost his life for my sake will find it. You know, it's, it's a constant test of faith that the Christian chooses to invest his or her time and talent in a place that he cannot see, in a kingdom she cannot touch. The hidden words in this text are in this world, after the words found his life and lost his life. So the choice of the Christian is the same choice that, well, Abraham made, to have the security and comfort of Ur, his, his homeland, or to travel to another world and hope for a nation he could not see. 
It's the same choice that Moses made, who gave up the pleasures and riches of sin uh, of this world for the vision of the future. It's the choice that Jesus made when He bore the cross willingly so He could see the light of resurrection morning. The one who chooses Christ chooses also the life that is to come over this one, the world that is unseen over the one around us, the pleasure and riches of the heavenly kingdom over the glitter and temporary delights of the earthly kingdom. So let's turn, towards, uh, let's turn the lesson towards ourselves, shall we? Think for a moment. Where have your choices led you until now? Well, have you been at peace with the world? Um, has your religion caused you any conflict? Uh, have you been friends with the enemy? Do you see sin and smile? Do you see injustice and turn away? Do you stare at need without feeling any push to give or get involved? Uh, have you pretty much uh, done your own will and avoided any sacrifice of your independence in order to put God first? Um, in your lifetime, uh, are you number one or is He number one? And maybe we should ask, uh, have you sunk your roots? Have you set your hopes? Have you dreamed your dreams on the riches and the rewards in this world? And there are many. You know, if these are your choices, well, I'm here to tell you that you've made the wrong decisions. They may feel right, but as Solomon says, there is a way which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Now, if on the other hand, your choices have led to conflict with the world or a breaking of your own will in order to allow Christ to rule and, 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 and a hope based uh, on the riches in heaven and not those here on earth, well, you may feel uncomfortable, you may always be in some sort of struggle, maybe never satisfied with the status quo here, but your choices are right and they will lead you to a peaceful death a glorious resurrection, and a joyful existence for all eternity. If you've put off choosing to follow Christ by obeying the gospel or have made bad choices as a Christian, then I encourage you to make the right choice by giving your life to God today. Well, that's the video blog for today. I'm Mike Mazzalongo and we'll see you again next time.